We're out here in Yellowstone taking a look at the new 28 to 200 millimeter Tamron lens for Sony mount. Let's do a hands-on review. Let's get started. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slime Lens, we're out here in Yellowstone. We've been having a great time here shooting with the new 28 to 200 millimeter 2.856 lens from Tamron for Sony. This is a great lens for this kind of a thing because it's so nice that you have a 28 millimeter, which is a very wide view. Great for these kinds of scenics. You're going to do the kind of scenic work to 200 millimeters where I got some great shots of Buffalo, which worked out fabulously because it goes to a telephoto at that point, 200 millimeters. Because this is a native Sony mount lens, you're going to get all of the features you expect from a Sony, like eye tracking, the autofocus is going to function perfectly. That's really what this lens is about, is being able to use everything that your Sony camera will give you with regards to autofocus, and it's built into this lens as well. So they take a lot of things off from the lens, like autofocus buttons and that, and it's going to be internally in the menu of the Sony. And that really makes these much more streamlined, but it really gives you a small form factor that you can carry with you, and it matches the mirrorless camera. I think that is the genius of this entire series, and I think this becomes a capstone, because this becomes the lens you carry with you when you walk around. You know, when I'm walking around and shooting, we're walking through the geysers, walking on the trails, it just gives me a great vista lens to a really a telephoto lens. So these lenses are designed for full frame, but you can put them on an APS-C sensor, which is going to give you like a 42 to almost a 300 millimeter lens on that APS-C, which is fabulous if you want to have a lot of reach. It's really important to understand the variable aperture when you buy a lens like this. At 28 millimeters, I'm at 2.8, but when I go to 50 millimeters, I'm going to be at 3.5. When I go to 100 millimeters, it's going to go to 4.5. When I go to 150 millimeters and above, it's at 5.6. When I'm working outside with a lens that has a variable aperture, a lot of times I'll put it on aperture priority and I'll put it at 2.8, but it will automatically go to that 5.6 as I go to 200 millimeters. I come back to uh, 28 millimeters, it's going to go to 2.8. So either that or I'll set it at 5.6 because I'm feeling like, you know, I'm doing scenics. I've got so much, I, I need depth of field here. I'm not worried about it being wide open. I got plenty of light, I'm in the sun. I'll set it at 5.6 and just an aperture priority and then I'll let the shutter track. And that just is a very easy way to use a variable aperture lens. I got some great shots at that Midway Geyser Basin, that orange and blues were just so beautiful. But I shot a range, there's 28 millimeters and then I cropped in. I went from 28 to 35 to 50 to 100, 135, and 200. So there are those images in a row. You can just see how that telephoto reaches out and isolates. I love how close this lens focuses. When you're at 28 millimeters, you are really from the uh, sensor to your subject, 7.5 inches, which means you're right on top of your subject. It allows you to focus that close, which gives you great close-up magnification. You can go from one to 3.1 magnification with that on that 28 millimeter uh, range. You, can't, you don't get that at 200 millimeters, obviously your uh, focusing distance is going to be a lot further, but that's fabulous at that 28 millimeter end. We've been concentrating on scenics out here, but the reality is this is a great walk around video and still lens. I think this really be gives you a lot more options because you've got a 28 to 200, and even though, even though you're going to 5.6, you can get a very shallow depth of field at that 200 to 5.6. Gives you a great stacking of the people when you're doing video. I think it's a great video lens as well. There's a great video application. My experience, and here are some of the images, this is very sharp lens. Even through that entire zoom, it's a very sharp lens. It, they've got, the elements are made to be able to control the uh, chromatic aberration, just give you a very, very sharp image from edge to edge. I think this lens just is about versatility. It gives you so many different options, everything from that 28 to 200 millimeters, so, which gives you landscapes to more telephoto, you know, great vistas to more tight animal shots, but also versatility with regards to focusing distance. It, it allows you to get in tight on things at 7.5 inches at 28 millimeters. It gets you right on top of things. You're doing macro photography at that point. You put this lens in your bag, and as you take it out on a day when you're not sure exactly what you're going to encounter, it gives you so many different options so you can cover whatever you're going to see. Downside, only downside for me is that 5.6. And that's a small compromise when you really get it into a body size like this that is so lightweight and so compact. And also you get that range, 28 to 200, I think that 5.6 is a very small compromise to be able to make that work. And I found it really not an issue because when I'm shooting scenics, 5.6 is fabulous. If I'm in low light, I go to 28 and I go to 2.8. So it just gives me great options there. There aren't very many lenses that have got that range 
that are going to give you 2.8 on the wide end. They usually go to 4 and that gives you 2.8 which gives you great fast versatility and low light. If you've got thoughts about the new 28 to 200, leave them in the comments below and let us know what you think. And also, subscribe to our channel. Don't come and leave without subscribing. We want you a part of our family. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking.